Our next speaker is Mark uh, McKeever uh, from uh, PwC, where he heads up the uh, Mark heads up the supply chain management practice in Ireland. Mark has 20 years' experience working in both consulting and industry. Uh, during that time, he has advised a wide range of clients, both from retail, consumer goods, uh, and indeed the pharma uh, industry sectors. Prior to PwC, Mark has worked with Tesco. Uh, uh, KPMG Consulting and Liz Claiborne. Uh, he also has uh, 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 an MBA from UCD uh, and a Master's in Business from Trinity College. Uh, look forward to hear what Mark has to say. Will you put your hands together, please, for Mark McKeever? Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, so, over the next 15 minutes, I'd like to give you a view on the global supply chain survey that PwC do. This, I say, it's a global survey it looks in at key supply chain trends. There's about 500 executives uh, have responded to this survey across a wide range of industries. And the outputs of this feed into our supply chain benchmark database. One of the things that we've done in this year is we've tried to link supply chain performance with financial performance. It's something new that we've done. Uh, and based upon that, we've been able to segregate companies into leaders in the industry and those that are laggards. And I guess the key finding that we've seen is that companies who are driving superior supply chain performance are also driving superior financial performance. There's that direct correlation between supply chain performance and financial performance. That really is a key thing coming out of this particular uh, survey. There's um, over six key findings. Normally I take about a half an hour through this presentation, but I've got to limit down 15 minutes today. However, there is a more detail on a survey in your packs, which gives a full finding, so I encourage you to read that at your own leisure. So I'm going to do a quick whistle top tour of the key findings. The first one is probably the most relevant as a key finding, and is we've called it You Can Have It All, and this is really the link between operational performance and financial performance. If you think traditionally in supply chain management, there's almost a matrix where we consider are we going to put, invest in a high service level and therefore it's a high cost model or do we go for low service level, low cost model? What industry leaders are doing now, what we're really seeing is, and you can see it here in this diagram, they're, in this particular example, they've got low inventory turns, so they're reducing their inventory investment, but they're also uh, leading in terms of uh, de uh, delivery performance. And what's, that do, what's that's doing is it's driving their margin. And you can see the profitability of leaders is significantly above average players and laggards. So there's that correlation between supply chain performance and financial performance. And that, I think, is one of the key messages coming out. Just in terms of this next slide, I think this is quite interesting. This next slide just looks at what the priorities are key supply chain uh, executives. It's no surprise that the first two are all around kind of cost reduction and profitability. And indeed, here in Ireland, this is a global survey. Here in Ireland, we did a CEO survey. I think 77% of CEOs are going through some shape or form of cost reduction program at the moment. The next two are all around kind of uh, uh, delivery performance and flexibility, which again, given more demanding customers, is probably no surprise to see. However, there's two areas I just want to quickly zone in on because I think they're very relevant for Ireland. One is skills, and you can see there's a big interest. I think it's going to be 19% increase in skills uh, focus, and that I think is really relevant to Ireland. Having worked with a number of different multinationals here in the country, one alarming gap and a concerning gap is a lack of supply chain talent. I know one or two multinationals have lost investments because they can't fill supply chain roles. So I think that's something that's really critical and you need to start thinking about. And the second one that I'd just point out is the entry into emerging markets. So one thing that's happening here in Ireland, we've got a lot of supply chain hubs here. And what one of the challenges they have is, okay, how do I enter into Eastern Europe? How do I enter into the Middle East? How do I get into uh, Africa? So again, that's something that's really dominant here in Ireland. Another key finding in terms of leaders and what separates out leaders and laggards in terms of supply chain performance is leaders are far more dynamic in terms of how they configure their supply chain uh, to meet the needs of different customer segments. So I think the stat is 83% of leaders to come up with different supply chain configurations depending on their customer group. Lenovo would be a good example of that. So the computer company, they've got a transactional supply chain and a relationship supply chain. AOS, the internet fashion retailer, another example. So again, they've got uh, very uh, quick supply chains depending on uh, customer requirements, and then a lower cost supply chain depending on other customer requirements. What's also interesting in that is leaders tend to operate in less channels than laggards. Therefore, they're far more focused. Therefore, they're building more scale in terms of channels and their supply chain operations. 
and therefore they're improving their actual profitability. So again, the link between operational performance and financial performance is coming through in this particular finding. If going to spit up here into kind of actual supply chain activities, which really there's kind of two findings here. One kind of divides supply chain activities in terms of those that are strategic and those that are more executional based. What's kind of interesting, and again, there's a very big Irish story here, I think, a lot of the strategic supply chain activities, such as strategic procurement, supply chain center of excellence, sales and operations planning, they're being globalized or regionalized. And I think that's a really key opportunity for Ireland Inc. So if I look at companies like Mylan, like Microsoft, like Alexian, like Amgen, uh, sorry, Allegan, they're all setting up supply chain hubs here in Ireland. And actually they're running here in Dublin, in Ireland, they're running their supply chain operations either for EMEA or for a global operation. I think that's an opportunity for Ireland Inc. to really develop uh, in terms of uh, new uh, sectors to get into. While you can see the more kind of execution activities, they tend to be more locally based, which again is what you'd expect. So that's where we locate supply chain activities. The next side looks at how we do, what do we do in companies and what do we outsource. And again, if you look at it, those executional based activities in terms of distribution centers, freight management, tend to be outsourced. So I think a good example of an Irish company in this would be Primark. So Primark are running a global operation. They've got about 10 people in a supply chain center here in Dublin, but they're outsourcing all the activities to freight forwarders, to third party logistics providers. So again, it's a really small nerve center and an intellect, if you like, that's managing a, a fairly complex supply chain operation. Uh, and it's been execution activities out in the market. The next one in terms is where leaders are focusing their attention. And again, you may want to read this in a survey that knows quite a lot of detail here. What's really interesting is leaders, they've got the basic supply chain operation in place. What they're really now focused on is how do I get to the next level? And this is an area, of, these are examples of the areas where they're really focusing on. So delivery performance number one, cost reduction number two, and the flexibility number three. And you can see the type of things they're doing to drive that superior performance. I kind of think of this slide, and again, if you want to reflect on it, I think it's really interesting for people who are op in, in operational roles to look at those kind of practices and to say, where does my company benchmark against those vis-a-vis -vis our competition? And what that might do is it might show you where you can actually improve, where you can drive your supply chain performance, and hopefully you can set an agenda in terms of how you can improve your operations going forward. The next and final finding, I think I'm okay in time, is around uh, technology. Uh, again, I think the key message is there's a big interest in technology within supply chain, as you would expect. Uh, you know, you've got everything from RFID technology systems, digital technology, and obviously statistical decision tools are kind of driving that. What I think is really interesting this slide, and why I kind of picked this slide out today, is just how it breaks down by industry sector. So I think it's quite interesting, over 50% of companies are investing in new tools to drive automation. But it's really the two big ones, and particularly where the increase is in the pharma sector and technology sector. So you think of pharma, it's probably in many ways being driven by kind of changing market circumstances. You've got you know, an aging population, there's great growth opportunities there. You've also got e-health. So that's probably driving a huge investment in technology in the pharma industry. Similarly, in terms of telecom, uh, the telecommunications with all mobile technology. So again, there's a big driver there. So I say that's a little bit of a whistle stop tour. Hopefully it wasn't too quick, but I just wanted to give you a flavor of the key findings. But as I say, to summarize, I think the key message is the direct correlation between operational performance and financial performance, and one can drive the other. And um, I say that uh, the detail of the findings is in your pack if you'd like to read it later. Okay, thank you. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thank you.